Glory to God. <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to focus on today. <clears throat> and it was a little different from when I did this last time. I was talking about giving Abby your best. Today we're going to talk about, do we have a fight song? That is the title of, actually this is the title of why I named this sermon. Do, we, do you have a fight song? Do you have a fight song? What is your war cry? When you're in the midst of a battle, when you have the enemy coming at you full force, do you have a strategy? Do you have a war cry, a battle song to get you through it? Are you doing what it takes to have a fighting spirit, to be a fighter and not a quitter? Are we people that can show the devil in the world that we are fighters, that quitting is not an option? Even if we get knocked down, we shake off the dust and get right back up. We keep on keeping on. And we need to just, you know, we really need to that the times that we're in, we really need to develop this fighter, this fighter spirit, this warrior spirit that's inside of us. You know, and it's like, what is, our, what is our fight song? We know Abba sings a song over us. He has a specific song for each one of us. You know, and amen. When Holy Spirit dropped this into me, what is your fight song? It connected it back to me as like, okay, you know, what was I talking about in pre-service prayer? Before the battle, you praise and glorify Abba. Before the battle, you sing your song of praise to him. Before the battle, you sing that song with your declarations and your fight. Because when it comes down to it, it's not over till it's over. It's not over till it's over. And all of us in here, we have what it takes to give Abba our best. All of us in here, we have what it takes to be fighters, to be quitters, and not give up no matter what. It doesn't matter in any situation, any circumstance, what may be going on, the devil's main goal is to try to get us to quit. That's what he wants us to do. He want, he'll throw everything at us and overflow to try to get us to quit and give up. But we need to remember that, you know what? Abba has birthed a dream in each and every one of us. He's birthed, birthed a destiny. And the devil knows, I think sometimes more than we realize, the, the devil knows how powerful we are, each and every one of us, individually and all so much more so as a group of people. And so that's why when it comes down to, you know, we're in a battle about something, don't ever quit. Don't ever quit. You know, just like what he was saying here, don't ever quit. Give it your best. Give it all, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how hard it is. You keep going and moving forward every inch of the way. Because when it comes down to it, we are not quitters. Quitting is not an option. We are fighters. We are warriors. And we need to battle through in that, especially in the times that we've come into. So then the days that we are in, we need to develop a fighting spirit, a warrior mentality, that no matter what, we will not quit. We will not give up. We will keep on fighting. We will keep on fighting for our families. We will keep on fighting for this nation. We will keep on fighting for what we believe for. And big, big, we will keep on fighting for this church. We will keep on fighting for our pastors. Because I don't know if any of you have noticed it recently over the last year or so, but our pastors have come up under supernatural attack, okay? It seems like it's been relentless, one after another, that our pastors have walked through, our mom and dad. But if anybody that I know of in this natural realm, in this time and period, that can walk through those things as a warrior in a no-quit spirit is mom and dad. But mom, you know, we just, we can learn so much from her. She's been through so much in the natural but we keep our eyes focused on her. Everything that she's walked through, we can walk through it too. You know, and she has just got inside of her that warrior mentality, that fighter. And if anybody, and I'm speaking, you know, somebody that I know personally, so that's why I'm using her as an example. But in the natural, if anybody had the right to decide, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with you all. Just go have at it. Do what you want. I'm quitting. I'm not going through it anymore. She honestly has the right to do it. She really does. With the stuff that she puts up with, really. From us, the stuff that she puts up with, from us, you know, amen. But when it comes, you know, all kidding aside, they have walked through some things the rest of us have not walked through, okay? And it's been relentless. It's been over and over and over again. You know, maybe some of us have walked through one or two things of the same that they have walked through. We have not walked through all the stuff that they have walked through over this last year, year and a half. And what do you see come out of mom and dad? I'm not trying to leave dad out, but mom is like the, the main figure who carries everything and stuff. What do you see out of her every single time? That don't quit attitude, that fighter mentality. 
And, and, and then she, she keeps displaying that, even in the natural when it seems like the situation she's fighting for is quitting, or the, or the person she's fighting for is quitting. She stood right there, and it's like, don't quit, don't quit. Give me your best. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And we need to develop that, because we're, we're coming into times. We're coming into, we're in a season where, you know what? All hell has broken loose on this earth. And we've begin, been beginning to see some things, and we're going to see some things on, on a, a more accelerated, higher level. But we are the people that hold the key to be able to fight through those things. We are the people, as long as we develop this fighting spirit, this no-quit attitude, we will get the victory. And it's going to be for us, like I said, for ourselves personally, because I know each and every one of us in here, we have something that we're believing Abba for, all of us. We all have been in a battle at one time or another, and the outcome of that battle depends upon us. It depends on how we fight that battle. And that's why we just we need to develop our, our fight song before, that, the, before the battle even comes. We develop that fight song. And you know what? There's always enough fight left in us. No matter what, there's always enough fight left. The devil can never drain the fight out of us. And mom is a very good example of that. You can never take the fight out of that woman. And we can rise up as sons and daughters of the Most High God and be ones where the devil can never take the fight out of us. Amen? <clears throat> so Joel 3.10, Amplified says, Let the weak say, I am a warrior. Amen? And that's who we are. Abba has created us as warriors. We are warriors. We keep moving forward. We keep pressing on to victory. When it seems like in the natural things are getting tough and there is pressure, we keep going. When it seems like the battle has really intensified and we're at the height of that pressure, we don't quit. We keep going. No matter what it is, whether it's financial, physical, relationship-wise, you know, the devil can sometimes paint a pretty... In the natural, he can sometimes paint a pretty nasty picture about things. But we all know the devil is a master of lies. And whatever he paints is a lie. The lies don't have the power. The lies don't have the truth. What has the power and what is the truth is the word of God. And what has the power is each and every one of us in, each and every one of us in here. We have that same power and authority that Yeshua had. And the same power and authority that Yeshua had and spoke out when he decreed and declared something, we have that same exact ability inside each and every one of us. And I think we just, we need to learn a little bit more how to just step into the fullness of it. Step into the fullness of realizing who we are and whose we are. We are, we are Yeshua. We were created in Abba's image and his likeness. And the same works that he did, the same we will do in greater, amen? <clears throat> So when it seems like the battle has really intensified and you're at the height of the most pressure, whether, like I said, whether it's financial, physical, health, work. I know work can be a big thing for a lot of people. Sometimes when we're at work, we're at our jobs, the devil can seem like he's just, ma'am, we turn around. Every time we turn around, there's something happening and, there's, and we're standing in faith and we're believing. You know? And the devil's going to do what he can to try to move you. He's going to, if you're believing for something financial, you're believing for something work-wise, whether it's a job, a promotion, or, or something to happen within your company, you know what? You just keep standing. You keep standing no matter what. It's not over till it's over. And you just keep on fighting. We don't get moved by what we see. You know, develop your fight song. If your fight song has to be, you know what, amen, all is well, how often we hear mom say that? All is well. In the household of faith, everything is going to be all right. You know what? And we just stand on that. We stand on that. And we stand on our fight song. And as long as we maintain that and we do what we're supposed to do and be led by Holy Spirit and, and be led by that we're fighters and we're not quitters, we're going to press through it. We don't ever stop before it or in the middle of it or even at the end of it. We press all the way through it. We come out on the other side and we have the victory every time. <clears throat> When you start to have the thoughts that you can't do it anymore, like Brock did in that video, what was he saying? This is getting tough. This is getting tough. I can't do it. It hurts. It hurts. And, he, and you know, the enemy's going to throw the thoughts. He's going to throw the thoughts. It's going to happen. It all depends on what we do with the thoughts. No thought can have any power, any impact, any penetration unless we allow it to. It doesn't matter. 
And you know what? And he's a liar. We need to realize and remember he is, he is a liar. He's the father of lies. He's going to throw fear and doubt to what you're believing for. Right up until that moment when you're, you're going to go into the battle, he's going to intensify it. But as you keep your eyes fixed and focused on our father, on our father and what he's done for us, and the fact that the devil is a liar, we'll press through that every single time and we will get the victory. And if we don't quit, you know, if you don't quit, when you're right, a lot of times right when you're in the midst of the battle and all of a sudden there's all that pressure, like, Brock, it's getting hard. You know, it's at the towards the end. It's getting hard. It's getting hard. I can't do this. It's getting hard. It is pressure, pressure, and it seems like it's building and building and building. That is at the utmost time where the devil wants you to quit. He, it, it may seem like he's got you. It's too tough. I can't do this anymore. But the devil knows that right around the corner is your breakthrough. Right around the corner is your victory. You could be standing right here, and you've got the most amount of pressure coming at you. And as long as you don't quit, as long as you don't give up, as long as you keep fighting, bam, right there on the other side of that one-inch line was your victory, was your breakthrough. <clears throat> so the whole thing is, you know, just don't quit. Just don't quit, no matter what it is. Even if you've been through something and, and the outcome wasn't quite what you had expected it to be, the devil will try to use that against you. The devil will try to use it against you to be like, oh, well, look, it, it didn't happen for you the first time. Where was your faith then? It didn't work. You know what? What's past is past. You learn from it and you move on it, because Abba is the God who will rewrite. He's the God who restores and renews. And... He will, make, he will turn it around and make it even better than what it was before. You know, maybe it was, maybe it was I don't know, whatever you were believing for. And if it didn't work out, you know what? You put that on the side because Abba will make that a so, hundred times better than what you could have imagined. And you just keep on pressing forward. Just keep on developing that fighting attitude, that fighting spirit. So having said that, we're going to look at an example of a man in the Bible who demonstrated this, and who demonstrated this fighting spirit, who demonstrated this no-quit attitude, who demonstrated that no matter what, I don't care about the situation, I don't care about the circumstance, I know that on the other side of it, Abba's got the most ultimate blessing in store for me, and I will not allow the devil to steal it from me. And that needs to be our personal war cry, part of our fight song. You know what? Enough's enough enough's enough. I am not going to allow the devil to steal from me anymore. No more. He's not going to steal from my finances. He's not going to steal from my health. He's not going to steal from my families. He's not going to steal from my marriage. Whatever it is we're believing for, he's not going to take it because we're going to stand up and fight. And he's going to find out that he's going to wish he never came against this group of people, this group of fighters. Because we are a people that are going to arise as those warriors that Abba created us to be. This camp right here, Abba created us for such a time as this. And I know all of you in here know that there's a high calling upon this church. There's a high mandate upon this church. And each and every one of us are in it together. And when we finally, finally click, finally click and come together as one, you know, as mom and dad has been trying to talk to us about as one, come together, knit together in heart and mind. You know what? The devil is going to be sorry he even messed with us. Amen. He's going to be sorry he even tried to come at us personally with things that, in our personal lives. He's going to be sorry that he tried to come at this church. He's going to see a group of people who rise up as fighters and warriors Amen. that they are. Amen? So this person that we're going to talk about might seem a little different, and I don't, you know, I don't even know if I recall Dad even talking about him, maybe a long time ago or something. But it's going to be Joseph. And Joseph was a man, we all know the story of Joseph, but we're going to do, we're going to do some reading just to go over some things with Joseph. And you know, when it comes down to it, the whole sum total of our life is made up of the choices that we make whether they're bad choices or good choices. We have two options that are always presented before us. We, have bad, we can make the wrong choice, we can make the right choice. And in Joseph's case, in the situation that he ended up in, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't his choice. It wasn't Joseph's choice to be thrown in a pit. You know, he didn't wake up one day and think, oh, you know what, I'm gonna make the decision, I'm gonna let my brothers throw me in a pit. And I want to be sold into slavery, amen? Oh, I think it would be so much fun. 
That was not Joseph's choice, okay? It was not his choice to be sold into slavery and to be put into a dungeon and do this. It was the choice of his brothers. But I think even though it wasn't ultimately jo Joseph's choice, and I could be wrong, but I think Joseph may have had a little part to play in that outcome. You know, he was a little bit of, uh, hey, guys, you know, daddy loves me more than he loves you. I'm his favorite. Hallelujah. Oh, look at what my daddy got me, this coat of many colors. Oh, you guys are wearing, what's that, wool skin? I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't think he was, you know, I think he may have added on to his brothers deciding, you know what, let's, let's get rid of this guy, okay? But when it comes down to it, even in that, even though it wasn't Joseph, Joseph's choice to be thrown in the pit and sold into slavery, it was jo Joseph's choice in how he handled the situation. He could have made the decision to either, he could have chose to be bitter about it, or he could have chose to be better about it. And in this case, we're going to see that Joseph chose to be better about it. So let's look at chapter, uh, let's ch start chapter 37. We're just going to kind of go, oh, sorry, Genesis. Genesis 37. I didn't figure you guys already know where Joseph is, so. <laughs> so we're just going to do a little reading here. And I know we all know the story of Joseph, but we're just going to read some things. And so let's start in Joseph, I mean, Genesis Oh, it is Joseph's story, right? <laughs> Genesis chapter 37, and we'll start at verse 3. We'll just go back to the beginning and, and revisit Joseph's, Joseph's life here. So this is the Amplified, so it's a little bit longer. But Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a distinctive long tunic with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not say peace in friendly greeting to him or speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him still more. So there's his other mistake right there, discussing his dreams with his, you know, you guys are going to bow down before me, you know. <clears throat> and he said to them, listen now and hear, I pray you, this dream that I have dreamed. We brothers were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about my sheaf and bowed down. Yeah, you know, really shouldn't have shared that, Joseph. That was not smart. Yeah. His brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or are you going to have us as your subjects and dominate us? And they hated him all the more for his dreams and for what he said. But Joseph, not being too wise, that's not in my Bible, but dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brothers also. He said, see here, I have dreamed again. And behold, this time not only 11 stars, but also the sun and the moon bowed down and did reverence to me. He's really asking for it, you know, he really is. And he told it to his father as well as his brethren. But his father rebuked him and said to him, what is the meaning of this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow down ourselves? To the earth and do homage to you? Joseph's brothers envied him and were jealous of him, but his father observed the saying and pondered over it. Joseph's brothers went to shepherd and feed their father's flock near Shechem. One day Israel said to Joseph, Do not your brothers shepherd my flock at Shechem? Come and I will send you to them. And he said, Here I am. And Jacob said to him, Go, I pray you. See whether everything is all right with your brothers and with the flock. Then come back and bring me word. So he sent him out of the Hebron Valley and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he had lost his way and was wandering in the open country. The man asked him, what are you trying to find? And he said, I am looking for my brothers. Tell me, I pray you, where they are pasturing our flocks. But the man said, they were here, but they have gone. I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. And when they saw him far off, even before they came near to them, they conspired to kill him. And they, said to one, and they said one to another, See, here comes this dreamer and master of dreams. So come on now, let us kill him and throw his body into some pit. Then we will say to our father, Some wild and ferocious animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Now Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands by saying, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into the pit or well that is out here in the wilderness, and lay no hand on him. He was trying to get Joseph out of their hands in order to rescue him and deliver him again to his father. When Joseph had come to his brothers, they stripped him of his distinctive long garment, which he was wearing. 
Then they took him and cast him into the well-like pit, which was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat their lunch, and when they looked up, behold, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites, mixed Arabians, coming from Gilead, with their camels bearing gum of the Sifax tree. We'll skip that part. And Judah said to his brothers, What do we gain if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and Midianites, these mixed Arabians who are approaching. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh. And his brothers consented. And then as you read further down, they talk about how, you know, they ended up killing a goat to get the blood onto Joseph's garment to bring back to the father and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then the last verse, And the Midianites and Ishmaelites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and the captain and chief, chief ex executioner of the royal guard. So there's a, the beginning of the story of Joseph that showed how it wasn't his choice to have these things done to him. Now, like I said, he played a part in it. You know, he really, he really played a part in it. He could have been a little more, you know, nicer about some things and not be bragging and everything about who he was and stuff. But, um, and there's a good example, though, of, of being careful of how we, how we present ourselves to people. You know, we can, we can give mixed messages that might might not sit too cool with some people, which could cause consequences to come upon us. And this is what happened in Joseph's case. But as we, you know, we'll read on, you know, we'll see how Joseph made the choice not to get bitter about it. Joseph could have been angry at his brothers, with unforgiveness for what they did to him, throw him in, you know, they're going to kill him. You know, you know, man, if I thought my sister was going to kill me, it would be like, you know, what's up with you? But anyways... But he had, he, had, he, had, he had a different spirit about him. And I believe, you know, Joseph was a man who, despite, you know, may have had a little bit of an ego, he was a man who had unforgiveness in him, who, who, who operated in unforgiveness. Who, I mean, who operated in forgiveness. A man who knew to make the choice to either let it affect him or either not let it affect him. And we're going to see as it plays out, for him making the right choice, it led him on a journey where Abba was able to bless him and prosper him. So if we go down further, let's go to, uh, let's go to chapter 39. So Joseph gets sold into slavery, and then the first verse, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain and chief executioner of the royal guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. But the Lord was with Joseph, and he, though a slave, was a successful and prosperous man. So you catch that thing in there? The Lord was with Joseph. Why was the Lord with Joseph? Because Joseph made the right choice on how to handle the situation. If Joseph had decided to get himself into a, a pity party and sympathy and, oh, why did this happen to me? Nobody likes me, blah, blah, blah. I'm in this pit, blah, 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 blah. I don't believe that Abba would have done what he had done for Joseph in this situation. But because Joseph maintained his position, because Joseph maintained who he was and whose he was and made the right choice, even as a slave, it says that he was successful and a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So then in verse 3, And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to flourish and succeed in his hand. So it wasn't just something that was witnessed by Joseph. It was witnessed by the people around him. Because Joseph kept himself in his position, because Joseph did what he needed to do, made the right choice about things, it impacted the people around him. The people around him saw, whoa, there's something different about this guy. There's something different, even in spite of the situation that he's in. He was in a situation. He was in a circumstance. But Joseph didn't allow himself to be under the circumstance. He didn't allow himself to be under the situation. He, he kept himself in that fighting spirit. If anybody, Joseph, I would say he too. Like mom, he too would have had a right to say, I'm done. I quit. I'm in a pit. I was thrown in a pit. I was going to be thrown in a pit and killed. I've been sent into slavery. I'm now a slave. And all this stuff. He had many, many opportunities to just throw in the towel and be like, you know what? I give up. I'm not doing this anymore. I quit. 
I'm just going to live my life as a slave. It's easy going, you know, stuff like that. But he didn't. Joseph didn't. He didn't because he knew that he had a destiny. He knew that there was something on the other side for him. And it, that split second, if Joseph had made a split second decision, because it's very, very important on how we react to a situation. In the midst of that situation, when Joseph was presented with what his brothers were doing with him, it was that one nanosecond that Joseph had that choice to make. It was right then. And it was very important how he reacted in that situation. If Joseph had reacted in the wrong way, it would have changed the entire outcome. We probably wouldn't even really be reading about Joseph in the Bible. The story would have been totally different. But how he handled it and how he reacted caused Abba to put him on a path of blessing to get him to his final outcome, his final destination, which was victory. You know, just like what, what mom talks about with, with Ashley. You know, when the doctors diagnosed her at four years old with leukemia, and mom heard Holy, Holy Spirit say to her at that moment, the very next words out of your mouth will, will determine Ashley's fate. Mom was a split second. That's all it takes, guys. It's all it takes is a split second. When you're faced with that decision, you got to know that you know instantly how you're going to react and handle it. Because you're either going to cause... You're either going to cause life or you're going to cause death. And we all want to make sure we're on the life side. Amen? <clears throat> so Joseph pleased Potiphar, verse 4. So Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in his sight. And he served him. And his master made him supervisor over his house. And he put all that he had in his charge. From the time that he made him supervisor in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Did you catch that? The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake because Joseph kept himself where he needed to be because Joseph had a fight song from the beginning of this to the end. The house that he was in was blessed by it. You know, those of us that go out and work, whatever our workplaces are, Asia, the hospital, Jay, wherever you go, you know, Tim goes to Lemonster Hospital, Kelsey and Jordan and Scott and I, Lemonster Crossings, you know, we have a fight song for that place. And as long as we keep ourselves in position and maintain that position, just like what we read about, about Joseph, for our sakes, Abba will bless that place. For, for Kelsey's and mine and Jordan's and Scott's sake, Abba will bless Lemister Crossings. We've already seen it happen. Abba will come down with his healing anointing and bless the residents in that place. At Lemister Hospital, where Tim is, for Tim's sake, for Tim's sake, Lemonster Hospital is blessed. And we all need to realize where we walk. With Jesse here at the church, for Jesse's sake, the people that she meets at OFT, the blessing will come upon those people. The residue that we all carry, even after Kelsey and Jordan and I leave Lemonster Crossings, after Jesse leaves here from OFT and Tim's part of OFT, all of whoever's part of OFT who comes and helps, when Tim leaves the hospital, when Justin leaves his place of work, all of us, when Ann, Ann volunteer at a hospital, when all, all of us, when we, when we leave that place, we need to realize we leave a residue. We leave a residue so that when the next person walks into that atmosphere, that residue comes upon them. When that person walks into the place that the Most High God just blessed and just healed and delivered and set people free, that person's going to, bam, slam right into it and experience the same exact thing. Asia, when she walks into UMass, you know, and there's a lot of healing that needs to go on at UMass, amen? But Asia, wherever she walks, leaving a residue, as she's going down those halls, coming in and out of rooms, interacting with the women she interacts with, for Asia's sake, the Lord will put a blessing on those people because we keep ourselves in position, and the Lord will bless. He will bless whatever we set our hands to. <clears throat> And the Lord's blessing was on all that he had in his house and in the field. And Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's charge, charge and paid no attention to anything he had except the food he ate. And then it goes on to the story. I won't go on to that whole story, but, but we know next how you know, Potiphar's wife tries to make a move on him and stuff because he was handsome and everything. And, and ultimately, you know what? In the flesh, Joseph had the very good, big opportunity to make the right, wrong decision right then and there. You know, Joseph, the Bible describes Joseph as a very attractive young man. And he was, you know, starting to become elevated in position. And Potiphar leaves to travel somewhere, and his wife, wife decides to, you know, try to, to be friendly with Joseph. And, 
And, what did, and in that instant, Joseph had a decision to make. Again, right then and there, Joseph was faced with multiple times of making decisions, making choices. And all along the lines, Joseph made sure he made the right choice. But he came to his second, his second attack that the devil brings at him. Okay, and, and, and a powerful attack. You know, that could be a very powerful attack for, for many people. And, but Joseph split second. He didn't sit there and think, oh, what should I do? Oh, oh, whoa, she likes me, wow. You know, he didn't sit there and deliberate it and go over it in his mind. He didn't have the time to do it. He had to make a split second decision. No, you do not belong to me, you belong to my master, and he fled. He made the right choice and he fled. There was a turning point right there. The, turn, the tide could have turned right there if Joseph had decided to make a different decision than what he made. And the story probably would have ended there. But Joseph made the right decision, and he fled. He fled. And what, what happens, though? Joseph made the right decision. He did what he was supposed to do. He fled. He got himself out of that situation. He got himself out of, out of evil that was trying to come upon him. And what happens? Potiphar's wife goes and lies and says that he did all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And what does it do? It gets him in trouble, right? So, but if we jump down to verse 21 in that, it says, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and loving kindness and gave him favor in the sight of the warden of the prison. So they went and got Joseph and they threw him into the dungeon because they believed Potiphar's wife over Joseph. But what did we read right there? The Lord was with Joseph. Why was the Lord with Joseph? Because he made the right decision. He made the right choice. He stayed in his position. No matter what, he stayed out of his flesh. He fought his flesh. And in the circumstance that was coming at him, he stayed in that mentality as that I'm not going to quit. I am a fighter, and I'm going to rise up. And it says right there, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and love and kindness and gave him favor in the sight of the warden of the prison. Now, if you think about it, Prisons aren't the most, uh, most popular place to be, you know, and, and who thinks of, of somebody being blessed and favored in a prison? You know, most of the prisons that I know of and seen and stuff like that, they're horrible places to be in, and, and nobody in there is blessed. But Joseph was, was the exception because he kept himself where he needed to keep himself, and he found favor in the sight of the warden. <clears throat> And the warden of the prison committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatsoever was done there, he was in charge of it. The prison warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge, for the Lord was with him and made whatever he did to prosper. So we see it again. Whatever Joseph did when he was in Potiphar's house, that place was blessed. The place was blessed because he was making the right choice. Now he gets thrown into a, ding a, a dungeon. And because Joseph maintained his position and maintained right choices, this prison is getting blessed. Hallelujah. We need a lot of blessings in our prisons here. <clears throat> so then we go on to how... Actually, I might skip ahead. Let's skip ahead to... I know chapter 40 talks about the butler and the baker and all that and how Pharaoh became angry with them and stuff because they couldn't just decipher, couldn't interpret his dreams and stuff. But let's jump over to chapter 41 in Genesis. <clears throat> and let's go to, we'll start at verse 38. And Pharaoh said to his servants, <clears throat> now this is after, you know, they needed to find somebody to interpret dreams and stuff like that. And they found out that Joseph was the one that could uh, interpret dreams and stuff and could interpret it accurately. So he has this whole encounter with Pharaoh. And then they get to verse 38 where it says, And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find this man's equal, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as your God has shown you all this, there is nobody as intelligent and discreet and understanding and wise as you are. You shall have charge over my house, and all my people shall be governed according to your word, with reverence, submission, and obedience. Only in matters of the throne will I be greater than you are. Then, Joseph, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in official vestments of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and officials cried before him, Bow the knee, and he set him over all the land of Egypt. 
And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And then down to verse 40, 46, it says, Joseph, who had been in Egypt 13 years, was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So Joseph had been in Egypt for 13 years. He had endured for 13 years. 13 years can be a long time when you're battling about something. It can be a long time when you're standing in faith for something. 13 years can seem like, you know, it's like 50, 60, 70 years. In 13 years, a lot, the devil can throw a lot at you to try to make you think differently, to try to make you think this isn't going to happen. You know, most people after six months give up and quit, you know. But this guy, 13 years he stood. He stood not quitting, not giving up. What if he had made the decision year one into this? Like I said before, you know what? I'm done. I, I quit. I'm done. His decision would have resulted in actions that would have impacted other people. Because we read, you know what? Pharaoh's house was blessed. Okay? That dungeon was blessed. And I believe it doesn't go into it, but you know, I, I know our God and stuff. I believe that when Joseph was in the midst of that dungeon, and you read the story about the, the butler and the baker and stuff like that, but Joseph found favor with the warden of that prison. So Joseph was in the midst of that prison forever as long as he was in, with the blessing operating in him and out of him into people that were in that prison, right. impacting people's lives in that prison. What if Joseph, back at step one, had made the wrong decision? He would not have impacted all of those people that he came into contact with in that prison. And that's why we need to realize how important it is about our choices and our actions that our actions do impact others. Joseph probably didn't even realize. He probably didn't even think to himself, oh, you know what? If I make the right decision, I'm going to go into a prison and be in a prison and bless all these people. <laughs> you know, he didn't. Joseph wasn't thinking that. You know, my goodness. But because he knew that he knew that he had to stand for what he was believing for, that he wasn't going to let anything knock him down and knock him out, that he wasn't going to quit, he knew that at the end, he was going to see the ultimate thing come to pass. He was going to see victory. And he stood up and he made the right choice and impacted all of these people, from the Egyptian's house to Pharaoh to the prison. And then ultimately what ends up happening, it comes back around full circle. You know, Abba sometimes works in ways where it comes around full circle. The story begins with what he did with, with what his brothers did to him, okay? The story ends with what, his, what Joseph did for his brothers, Okay? Now, what his brothers did to him was not nice. Okay? It, was, it, was, it wasn't God. It wasn't the blessing. But what it did was Abba used Joseph to have that come full circle around to impact Joseph's family. And, they, and you read on, and I know we know the stories you read on, and Joseph's father sends the brothers out because there's famine in the land, and they got to go find food, and they come to Joseph's you know, Joseph's kingdom. And Joseph, because he's making the right choice about things, gets elevated to second in command in Egypt. Okay, he's just under Pharaoh. He's second in command. This guy's got power. This guy's got power. Power that he would not have had if he had made the wrong choices. But now here's his brothers coming into the land, and, and they don't recognize Joseph. And, but they're begging him, you know, we need help. We need food. Our father is back here, and blah, 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 and, you know, all this stuff. And what does Joseph do? Joseph had the opportunity right then and there. Listen, buddy, I could get you back right now for what you did for me. He had the opportunity right then and there to get in his flesh and seek revenge on his brothers. But what did he do? He did not do that. He did the exact opposite. Now, he didn't reveal himself right away to his brothers. He had them do certain things before he revealed himself. But he knew all along what he was going to do, that at the end, he was going to reveal himself to his brothers, and they were going to be restored. The family was going to be reunited and restored, and his brothers and father were going to come, and the blessing was now going to come upon that family. All because of one man, one man who decided, decided to stand, one man who decided to stand against the attacks of the enemy, who at the very beginning, probably, like I said, wasn't even thinking, oh, you know, down the road, my family, my brothers and my father are going to come under a famine, and this could happen to them and stuff. You know what? Abba knows. Abba knows the end from the beginning. And it doesn't matter that we know. All that matters is that we follow him step by step by step in his footsteps. And what happened? It came around full circle. What the enemy meant for harm, 
Abba turned around for good. What the enemy meant to destroy, Abba revived. And he revived better than it was before. Because what the brothers did to Joseph, Joseph didn't react in revenge. Joseph turned around and acted in blessing upon his brothers. And we see the outcome of that story being a story of victory. Because where we have is Joseph, who had a fight song from the beginning to the end. And the end of his fight song was victory for his entire family. Not just for him, it was for his entire family. It brought his entire family together, his brothers, his father, it reunited, it restored. Ultimately, maybe even saved his brothers and father from death. Who knows? They were in the midst of famine. And back in that time, famines were a serious, serious thing. And so he, he from the very beginning, had a life and choice decision to make, which he really didn't realize that he had a life of choice decision to make. But he made the right decision from beginning to end and fought through all the way and got the victory, not just for himself, but his whole family. Amen? Amen. So each one of us, each one of us has a destiny, and that destiny is waiting on us. Joseph had a destiny. You know, and like I said, what if his choices had been different? What if he quit? Each one of us has choices to make. And one of the choices, the, the, one of the right choices is to never quit, to have that fighting spirit, to never give up. We don't give in to defeat. You know, our destiny is waiting on us. Each and every one of us in here have a calling. Each and every one of us has a destiny, and it's waiting on us. You know, we're not waiting on our destiny. Our destiny is waiting on us. Our destiny is waiting for us to rise up. You know, it's right there saying, come on, guys, I've got this for you. You know, Abba's right there saying, come on, guys, come on, girls, I've got this right there for you. If you just rise up and take a hold of it, if you just fight, and even though where the fight may seem tough, it might seem like, you know what, I'm giving it all I've got and I can't do this anymore. You just keep pressing forward. Nothing that the devil has to do at us is worth it is worth giving into him. Because we need to realize it just doesn't impact us. It impacts our families, but it impacts people years down the road that we didn't even know. We see that in the case of Joseph. He was in Egypt for 13 years. Year one, he didn't know in year 13 that, he, that the Egyptian's house was going to be blessed, that the people in the prison, the warden was going to be blessed by him being there by whoever Joseph came in contact with in the prison was going to be blessed because of Joseph. He may have turned around the very, the very course of some of the people's lives in that prison. There may, may have been some people in that prison that were on the road to death. And because Joseph was there at that time, in his position, singing his fight song, it impacted those people. Amen? So we don't ever give in to feet, defeat. We press on to victory. We don't quit, and we make sure we, have, uh, we develop that, that fighting spirit. You know, and how do we develop that fighting spirit? When it comes down to it, it's by this. It's by the word. We develop that fighting spirit by the word. The Bible has a lot to say about us being warriors. It has a lot to say about not quitting, about not giving up. You know, it has a lot to say about you press on forward, you fight to the end, you get knocked down, you get right back up. You shake off the dust, and you get right back up. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, I don't, it does not matter how serious the circumstance may seem. It may seem like all hell has broken loose in your life. Finances are being attacked. Health is being attacked. Marriages are being attacked. The devil, but you know what? He's only going to come at you like that if you're doing something right. He's trying to stop you. He's trying to stop you. And he will stop you if you don't rise up as that warrior. He'll stop you if you don't rise up as that fighter. He will stop you if you rise up as a quitter. And I know all of us in here, there's not one of us in here that are quitters. All of us are fighters. All of us have that mentality inside of us that we will not quit no matter what. I don't care that if I have to crawl to get to my destiny, I will not quit. I don't care if I have, by illustration only, dragon whatever tied to my leg. I'm going to cross over that finish line. I don't care, by illustration only in the natural, how my body may feel. If the devil is throwing every type of symptom of, of pain and sickness or whatever, you know what? I will not quit. I will stand up and fight, and I will get the victory. I will overcome, because Abba's got a destiny for me, and that destiny is waiting on me. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let, I'm just going to quickly go over, this was the old part that was in my sermon from before, about that fighting spirit. And I'm just going to give you this, the, the keys real quick again 
of what that was to have that fighting spirit, the characteristics of that fighting spirit, that, the characteristics of, of a warrior, of a warrior mentality. You know, and there's a, a scripture in Proverbs 18, 14 that says, the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? So the first key for that fighting spirit, to rise up as that fighter, not a quitter, is to be assured and confident. Assured of who you are and whose you are. Confident in who you are and whose you are. Confident that, you know what? It does not matter what the devil tries to do. We will fight him off every single time. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, chapter 4, 8 and 9 says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And then 13 and 14 say, We have in the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we also speak. It's one thing to be thinking, I'm not a quitter, I'm not a quitter. Sitting in the corner, I'm not a quitter. You need to be saying it. You need to be saying, you know what? You need to be saying it to the devil. You need to be saying, you know, like that scene in War Room when she walks throughout her house. I resist you, Satan. I resist you. You are not welcome in this house. You get out of my house. You get off of my daughter. You get away from my husband. You know what? And she just didn't want you get away from my husband, devil. You no, know, you know what? She said it with power and authority. She said it knowing who she was and who she was. Satan, out of here now in Yeshua's name. And she rose up as that, that powerful warrior because she knew she had the power and she knew she had the victory if she did that. Second one, being established and unmovable. We need to be established in who we are and whose we are and maintain a, a stance of that we cannot be moved. Acts 20, 24 says, none of these things move me. Hebrews 10, 31 says, but we are not of them who draw back. Psalms 112, 7 and 8, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established and he shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. We don't draw back. We won't quit. We will keep moving forward. Third key, we're ready for anything. Prepared in season and out of season. Always in a place of being ready for anything. Philippians 4.13, this is the Amplified. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. 1 Samuel 30, verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? We remember that one. Shall, we overtake, shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Recover all. Even if the devil has come in and has gotten something, you can get it back. Abba will cause you to recover all. Like I said before, he's the God who restores and renews and restores to better than before whether it's finances, health, relationships, whatever, he restores to better than before. Fourth one, an overcome is attitude. We have to have that overcoming attitude. 1 John 5, 4 and 5 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Yeshua is the Son of God? Romans 8, 37 and all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Fifth one, fifth key, fighting spirit. Having that fight song, that war cry. You know, Eric Ludi, 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 talks about that ancient war cry, okay? He's got a war cry, and we need to instill that war cry into us. Staying cool, calm, and steady. You can't be a warrior. You can't have a war cry if you're all nervous and uncomfortable and blah, type of thing, you need to stay calm, cool, and steady. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 5 in the Amplified says, As for you, be calm and cool and steady. Accept and suffer unflinchingly every hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fully perform all the duties of your ministry. Proverbs 17, 27. He who restrains his words has knowledge. And he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. So we stay calm, cool, and steady. Second, sixth key, 
and this is what we've been talking about through the whole thing. That fighter, that warrior, our, our fight song, doesn't give up and does not quit. Galatians, Galatians 6, 9, this is in the Amplified, says, And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap. If we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. So in due season. In due season, if we stand our ground, if we keep fighting, we will reap what we've been believing for. And finally, the last one, and this is a big one because we talk about praise and thankfulness and praise and Abba before the, before the battle, you know, and all that is being full of joy and peace, full of shalom, entering into the rest of Abba, entering into his shalom. Joy and peace are indicators of a fighting spirit. They're indicators of, a strong, of, of having strong faith. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Yeshua, the Anointed One. Amen? Amen. So... In closing, let's just take another quick look at Brock. And I know that, I don't know about you, but I can see that video clip I don't know how many times, and it still impacts me every time I see it. There's just still something about it. And in different points of that clip, there's different areas where it's just like boom, zoom, gets, gets right in there and impacts me. So let's look at Brock. What was Brock doing when he was, you know, they're doing the, the death crawl? I know some of us renamed it the Life Crawl because we didn't think, eh, Death Crawl's not too cool. So we renamed it Life, cr life, life Crawl. <clears throat> victory Crawl, there you go. We named it Victory Crawl. So what was Brock saying? He was saying, you know, it's, he's too heavy. He's too heavy. It's getting tough. He's too heavy. Sometimes we face battles that seem like that. And I touched on this just a little bit ago. We face battles that seem like they're too tough. It's too heavy on us. But you know what? We need to keep moving forward. What did Brock do? Despite all that, despite the pain he was feeling in his body, despite how his legs had to have been burning, amazing how his legs must have been burning and his arms and probably the pain he was feeling in his back, he kept moving forward. He kept going forward. He just kept pushing through, pushing through. Despite anything that he was feeling, he kept pushing through. Despite maybe if you know, there was doubt among some of his fellow players in the background, he kept pushing through no matter what. He was not going by what he felt. He was not being moved by the natural. Now, another big thing of it, now he was saying, this hurts, this hurts, but he kept going through it. He kept going through it. And another big part of that is who did he have? Was he alone in this? He was not alone in this, right? Now, how many of us know that when we're alone in the midst of a battle, I don't know about you, but if I'm alone in the midst of the battle, it makes it pretty, pretty tough sometimes. You know, pretty, pretty, sometimes it's like, yeah, you know what? Okay, yeah, I am done. And usually I have mom or Jordan or somebody come up alongside me and slap me in the head and say, you know, wake up. And, and I snap back into position and, and do what I need to do. But, you know, if he had been alone, it would have been a lot tougher. He would have been a lot tougher. But he had somebody who had rose up next to him, rose up next to him, and was supporting him and encouraging him. And that was the coach. That was the coach who was with him there that whole time, that whole time saying, you know, you can do this. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit on me now. Don't quit on me now. Keep going. Keep going. It's all heart from here. I really like it when he says that. It's all heart from here. Give me your best. Give me your best. And he kept on him. He kept on him. Now, some people may think, oh, well, he's being hard on him. He's being hard on him. No, he kept on him because he knew. He knew, he knew what was in this man, this young man. He knew that if he just tapped into his fight, if he just tapped into his fight song, he'd keep going and keep going and keep going. And so he stayed there right in the midst of them, right in the midst of how tough the battle got. That coach did not deserve him, desert him. He got down on the ground with them and kept, don't quit, don't quit. Give me your best, give me your best. Come on, Brock, 10 more steps, 10 more steps, five more steps. And he stayed with them right to the end. Stayed with them right to the end. You know, and there's a lot of people out there in the world that doesn't have that one person that will stay with them right to the end, that will stay with them and fight with them right to the very end, 
that will not give up on them, not quit on them. There's not too many people in the world that have that one person. But you know what? Every single person sitting in this congregation right now is very, very, very blessed that we do have that one person that will fight for us to the very end. We do have that one person that no matter what, no matter what we do, no matter how we act in the flesh, no matter what we may, you know, ridiculous thing we may let come out of our mouth because we're totally in our flesh, that one person never, ever will give up. We'll always just be like Coach in that video with Brock, right there on the ground with us. Don't give up. Don't give up. Quit. Give me your best. And that is mom. And we need to realize how blessed we have, we are, to have that one person that is there, that is willing to give it all, willing to give the sweat and the strength, just like that coach did. Okay? Brock was blessed to have him for a coach. And we are blessed to have mom, the mom, the woman that we have in each and every one of us, that have in our lives. Because we have that one person that no matter what, like I said, will always be there. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give up. You know, and, and for me personally speaking, and I've said it, I've shared it before, you know, my daughter wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that woman. My daughter would not be here today if it wasn't for that lady beside me every time, talking to me on the phone, in person, you know what? You can do this. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep moving forward. Do this. Do that. And at times that I think, man, my goodness, I'm pregnant. Have sympathy, would you? You know, really, you know, pregnant women, right, Tiffany? We need compassion. Come on, hallelujah. Glory, you don't understand. We're carrying around this thing in our belly, Asia, right? It's like, man, give me some sympathy here. Man, no, that would have been the worst thing, you know? And that's flesh. That's flesh. You know, you don't know how I'm feeling. My, my eggs didn't sit right because of this baby. You know what? Don't even say that to mom, you know? It'd be like... But the spite, the spite, you know, seriously, the spite, no matter what, she's right there. And sometimes I know there's some of us in here that think, man, she's hard. Man, she's not giving me any compassion. I've thought that sometimes, okay? I, recently, it's like, man, whoa. But what happened? <laughs> what, did it, what did it cause me to do? It caused me to shift like that. Because if I hadn't shifted like that, I was going down a road of destruction. Okay, there have been times in my life that if it wasn't for mom, I would not physically be standing here. Okay, I would probably be home early with the Lord being like, oh, mom, I, why didn't I listen to you? <laughs> Seriously. But because we have this lady in our lives, and we are, we are blessed because there are other churches that don't have that. They don't have that warrior woman, this woman right here who has a continuous fight song. Okay, she has a fight song every moment of the morning when she gets up. Every morning when she gets up, she's already got her fight song developed. She's already got her fight song playing. And she plays that fight song throughout the day. It's just not like, oh, I turn my fight song on and listen it to the morning. Yeah, 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 I get all jazzed up. No, she keeps that fight song with her throughout the entire day. And that's why, that is why she walks in the supernatural the way she walks in the supernatural. And all of us have that same same thing that we can do also. All of us, I think mom said it one time when War Room had just come up, all of us are Miss Claris. Well, maybe not Scott and Justin and Tim you know, and Vern. You, know, you guys probably don't want to be referred to as Miss Claris, but uh, Papa, Papa, I know there's one to be Miss Claire and Don. But anyways, you know, but seriously, that fighting spirit, that warrior, that decree and declaring the word, believing, knowing who her father is, knowing her, who her God is, and Mama said that. All of us in here have that Miss Clara inside of us. And it's just time to, to rise up, to rise up with that fight song, with that warrior. And you know what? Take back what the enemy has stolen and stop him in his tracks from stealing any more from us. Right. Amen? Amen? Get back. Recover. Recover. Restore. Restore and renew. You know, it says, uh, and as Isaiah says, like Abba says, I am the God who restores and renews. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. You know what? If he stole finances from you, if he stole relationships from you, you know what? Behold, he is doing a new thing. And it may be a new thing within that same relationship. It may not be. But if it's a new thing within that same relationship, it'd be better than it was before. Better than you could ever, ever imagine. Because Abba has absolute best. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. 
So I'm just going to share a couple little quotes. I did, this is my second closing. Sorry. So I'm just going to share a couple. <laughs> I'm just going to share a couple quotes that I actually found about not giving up, not quitting. I think some of them I may have shared before, but I just thought they were just like really, really impactful. If you fall, get back up. If you stumble, regain your balance. Never give up. The minute you think of giving up, think of the reason why you held on so long. The moment you give up on something, your opponent is enjoying the victory. The moment you've given up, your opponent has gotten the victory. You've gotten the defeat, your opponent's gotten the victory. Run when you can, walk if you have to, crawl if you must, just never give up. Don't ever get up, give up, everything's possible. Never give up, for that, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. No matter how you feel, get up, dress up, show up, and never give up. You know what? And that's, I know for me personally speaking, that's a big one. Because I've been through things, it's just like, Abba, I am staying in bed all day. I'm not getting out of these pajamas. I'm not going to take a shower. For me not to take a shower every day, well, that's just, uh, yeah. No, that's a biggie for me. But it's like, you know, and I've had those days. It's just like, I'm not crawling out of this bed. I am just staying in my pajamas, and I'm going to sulk and whine and just lay here. You know, and really, what good does that do? Yeah. You, know, you end up wasting the whole day, and you didn't take a shower, so you're probably smelly, and you know, you're in your pajamas, and yeah, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, but you know what? In the midst of, you know, even like a physical challenge, by illustration only. There's been times, you know, before when I used to get sick, you know, get colds and stuff. I, you know, moping and laying in bed, and, you know, Scott, can you give me some tea? Yeah, face cloth. Can you do this for me, please? You know, what good does it do me? Seriously, what good does that do me? In the midst of no matter how I'm feeling, I may feel the worst possible way. I need to get up, get myself dressed. And you know, an amazing thing happens. When you start to get up out of that situation you're in, you get yourself dressed and you start moving, and you feel all that stuff all of a sudden just falling off of you. You feel symptoms just boom, 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 gone. And next thing before you know it, you're 100% healed. Next thing before you know it, that bill is 100% paid. Next thing before you know it, that relationship is 100% restored. Amen? Hallelujah. So in third closing, in ending, we're going to see another clip that I don't think I've ever showed in here. But it's actually going to be um, it's a clip from Facing the Giants. And it's, a, it's a victory clip. And it's a, in the midst of someone who is like, was doubting themselves, but then again, there's that coach. It's like, no, you can do this. I know you. You can do this. You know, and put yourself, put yourself in the position of the, the, the kicker in this clip and see mom in the position as the coach. You know, and, and whatever you may be facing, whatever battle it is, whether it's at work or finance or marriage, relationship, put yourself in the position as the kicker. Put, see mom in the position of the coach. And then see some other people that, ra have, that, that rise up in support of this person. And just see the outcome of the victory that happens. Amen. I think that says it all right there. Amen. Another powerful clip from Facing the Giants. You know, in the coach, in a, what I was saying, see mom as that position of the coach. I think maybe even more so see mom in the position of that dad. That dad going in his wheelchair and fighting through and getting himself to fight to stand up. And what does he say when that guy says, let me come help you? No, don't touch me. I'm fighting for my, standing for my son. And that's who mom is to us. You know what? Don't touch me. I'm standing for my daughter. I'm standing for my son. I'm standing all the way, and we're going to get this done. Amen? Abba, we thank you and praise you. Abba, we thank you that we are a blessed, blessed congregation. And Abba, we thank you that you are rising us up. We arise right now. We make that quality decision right now, Abba, to rise up as fighters to have our fight song. And no matter what the devil may try to throw our way, Abba, we will come through out the other end in victory. We will be singing and dancing our fight song from beginning to end, rising up knowing that we are not quitters, that quitting is not an option. Quit is not even in our vocabulary. And Abba, we give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, most high God, for you truly are our Father, my Father, our Father, and we thank you for the blessing in mom that you have given to us, mom and dad. But we thank you, Abba, that we have a mom that will stand for us, that will stand for us despite whatever. 
until we get through and have the victory in Yeshua's name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord rise you up as that warrior that you are. May you see yourself as our Father sees you, as a strong, powerful son and daughter of the Most High God. In Yeshua's name, amen.